Last time out, Sheriff Fenton Washburn let us know that the investigation into the skeleton found on South Fork had ended with no real information turned up. So I'm glad that's all cleared up. Anyway, here's Jock's trial. Sue Ellen returns from Dr. Danvers as if nothing had happened in the last episode. Bobby and Jock are still worried about her, though. And Jock complains about the women folk. Sue Ellen ruining her perfect marriage, and Ellie wasting time trying to save some park when he took time off to be with her. Yeah, Jock's life is really hard. At the DA's office, Cliff Barnes is still salty over associate DA Sloan trying to put him away for killing Julie Gray. Sloan gets in a dig about Cliff being a loser, but he does gift him with an opportunity to stick it to the Ewings. A cold case with a body found on South Fork. Miss Ellie and her gaggle of hippie malcontents apply pressure to the city council to get the Devlin Park decision reversed. Matt Devlin arrives on the scene and argues with them some before offering Ellie a ride home. Elsewhere, JR tells Kristen she got an A in bedroom and an F in kitchen when she learned how to please a man. Well, she also got an F in high diving, but that's neither here nor there. She promises to do better once they're married. JR says that they need to ramp up the process, which means letting him do the thinking. Matt drops Ellie off at South Fork, prompting a slightly awkward exchange with Jock. Speaking of awkward, Sue Ellen gets violent with JR, who tells her he's just concerned for her falling off the wagon. Sue Ellen refuses to come down for dinner, so JR tells everyone he's just at wit's end and is afraid that he'll have to put her back in the sanitarium. Bobby pushes back on Sue Ellen's behalf, but a phone call from Cliff reveals that Digger is back and drunk off his ass. Cliff tells Pam that the revelation that baby John was really JR's son was the final straw. The Ewings finally broke Digger when JR fathered a child with his own wife. What an insidious plot. Pam tells Cliff he's just as much to blame for making Digger sick by making him think that Cliff would amount to something. Oh, that was way harsh, Ty. Cliff vows revenge, which is just the thing you want in someone handling a murder case. That'll look great in front of the judge. Jock has a fun day planned for Ellie, but she wants to spend the day arguing with Matt Devlin. Fenton is rightly skeptical of Cliff's involvement in a murder case involving the Ewings, but Cliff is rightly skeptical of Fenton's detective abilities. Maybe with one overzealous prosecutor and one lazy sheriff who gives too much deference to the rich and powerful, he might meet in the middle for justice. Cliff does find a lead, a belt buckle with an engraving. To H.M. with love, R.B. Dwellen finally breaks down and tells Bobby that she wants to leave and that all of the problems that they've been having lately stem from her trying to find a way to get little John away from J.R. Bobby advises her not to play that game and to decide slowly, which is just about the best advice Bobby's given on this show so far. At the meeting, Matt Devlin asks Ellie about how she got involved with Jock in the first place. He asks her to lunch to discuss the project, but Ellie clearly knows where this is going and shoots him down. He asks for a lunch date the following day to discuss the project. You know, if he didn't spend all that time grilling a married woman about her personal life, they could have probably discussed the project right then. Doc tells Fenton to knock himself out going through the old ledgers that are stored in the shed. Jock, repeat after me. Am I being detained? I want to speak to my attorney. Pam finds Digger unconscious in a pile of bottles and calls an ambulance. Bobby storms into the office and scolds JR for not consulting him before cutting back production. Bobby, you'll remember, was supposed to be JR's babysitter after he nearly cost the family their ancestral home. Isn't anybody gonna say something like, Thank you, JR, for making us billionaires? In a weird moment, Bobby lays out the plot of season six when he challenges JR to a fight for Ewing Oil. Maybe you're right. Maybe only one person can run this company. Would you like to have a showdown as to who it'll be? Despite Fenton's best efforts to sweep the case under the rug, Cliff narrows the body down to four guys, one of whom is confirmed by Deputy Newley to be a strong lead, Hutch McKinney. McKinney had a temper and was always brawling with people, and he had a long-running feud with Jock Ewing. Fenton puts a stop to the questioning, despite it, you know, being a murder investigation. 
That's okay though, because Cliff has to run to the hospital to tell an unconscious digger that he'll be seeking revenge on the Ewings. Sue Ellen, in a moment of clarity, tells Dr. Elby she just wants to get away from JR, even if that means leaving baby John at South Fork in the short term. She reasons that Miss Ellie and Pam will take good care of him. Besides, staying isn't an option anymore because JR will put her in the sanitarium. The only hope is leaving and having Dusty help her with the custody battle. LB rightly earns his $10 for this session, when he reminds her that if she leaves JR for Dusty, she'll still just be dependent on a man for her strength, and she should be trying to stand on her own two feet. Cliff pulls some investigators off their real cases to dig up dirt on Jock Ewing, and when it comes to digging up dirt, you turn to an anthropologist. Lucy makes a date with someone from school who turns out to be her skeevy professor. Doc objects to not being able to approve and then starts running down the Barneses. Well, that's a Barnes family for you. Never did take responsibility for their failures. Bobby sits idly by and listens, even though he's married to a Barnes. But Pam is an outlier. She blames herself for literally every problem that ever comes up. Bobby usually remains silent when she does that too, so I'm not sure why I'm surprised. Bobby does call JR out for trying to make Sue Ellen look like a drunk and not doing more to save his marriage. So maybe Bobby just has an inability to multitask when it comes to standing up for women. Sue Ellen tearfully explains her plan to baby John, who is also tearful. Not me though. I'm a rock. <laughs> anyway, she plans to leave John at South Fork and meet up with Dusty where they'll hatch a plan to win custody. See, that wasn't so emotional. Mama. Cliff's anthropologist friend reconstructs a face from the remains. Sheriff Washburn apologizes to Jock for the inconvenience of the investigation, but says Barnes is just unstoppable. He leaves just as Ray pops in to tell Jock they found a weapon. Doc all but confirms that it is his gun that was found near the body. He also enlists the boys to engage in a little light obstruction of justice. JR does indeed call in a few markers, but what will always be distracting in the scene is the portrait on his desk that makes it look like Sue Ellen stumbled into a John Casablanca's modeling center at the local mall when she was coming out of the Orange Julius. It is at this point where I must introduce you to character actor Al Hopkins. Hopkins had a long career playing bit roles as a drunk, a wino, or a tramp, on various big-time TV series. He was quite versatile, apparently. Sometimes he flipped to the other side of the bar and played a bartender. I can't find any instances of him being a featured player, so this episode might constitute one of his most visible roles. I bring this up because... well... Can't you throw something over it? Looks like old Hutch is coming right out of the desk. Should I tell him, Mr. Barnes? Please do. It was a couple weeks after the election. <laughs> Some of us were still celebrating. Right there in the bar, Jock fired him. He ordered him to leave the ranch by morning, or he was gonna kill him. Those are the line readings of a man who will have the spotlight taken away from him only when it's pried out of his cold, dead hands. So Ellen arrives at Dusty's apartment wearing a fur coat that she lifted off of Goldie from the Mac. Dusty is nowhere to be found though. Matt Devlin admits to tricking Ellie into coming to lunch so he could confess his feelings for her, and also confess her feelings for him. I've been falling in love with you. And you've been falling in love with me? Yet, yeah, that's not how that works. Besides, do you really want to try to cuckold the man who is under investigation for murder? Then, in one of the most devastating, out-of-nowhere moments of the show, Sue Ellen is watching the news on TV when she hears that Dusty Farlow was killed when his private airplane went down. So she makes plans to leave JR for Cliff Barnes, who reveals himself to be three jars of marshmallow fluff wearing a suit. You can't fight City Hall. What are you telling me? And then finds an actual strong man who loves her. Are you politely trying to tell me that you don't want to see me anymore? I am politely asking you to marry me. The rescue team, which has reached the wreckage, reports finding no sign of life. And in one of the most tragic moments of the series, Sue Ellen walks zombie-like to the liquor table and pours a drink. She resisted every stressor and every temptation JR put in front of her. But she couldn't overcome this. And we're out. Well, that was a harrowing conclusion to the- Oh wait, there's more! 
Bobby arrives home to find Fenton Washburn and his deputy reading Jock Ewing as rights. Jock is under arrest for murder. And now we're out. Phew. This season ramped up in a hurry. From JR trying to gaslight Sue Ellen back into the sanitarium to Kristen Lady Macbething her way into the fold, to Digger winding up in a wild turkey coma, to Jock getting arrested, to Dusty dying, and Sue Ellen is off the wagon now. Are you kidding me? The last two episodes have been all killer and no filler, unless you count Matt Devlin's dalliances in his own mind with Miss Ellie. Those scenes look like they're just there to give Barbara Bel Getty something to do. Literally everything else is either a seismic shift for the characters or leading to bigger things. That's some tight, well-crafted writing. And what's more, in a season full of cliffhangers, this one gives us two season-ending worthy hooks into the next episode. Join us next time when we find out Sue Ellen's fate, Jock's possible motive, and just who in the hell Hutch McKinney was. <laughs>